never seen this kind of love before. The program you're about to watch contains stories of real people. Today, as you watch, expect to be inspired, transformed, and healed. Welcome to Peculiar Moments Global, where every moment is supernatural. Your love story is next. My name is Izine Kalu. I am on the spotlight of Peculiar Moments Global, and this is my love story. I am a storyteller and an illustrator and a graphic designer. Okay, I. In 2020, mid year 2020, during the COVID 19, I was diagnosed with invasive breast cancer. It was, it was one of the most trying moments of my life. But somehow, I refused to accept that I had that. But the medical reports were proving me wrong every time I had to do a test. Uh, there was a lot of battle in my mind. Because um, it was something they termed as generational, something that was passed on. So I had to hold on to life. It wasn't an easy process at all, at all. Um, when I went to the oncology center, I was like the youngest person there. Everybody was like, ah, they're just too young to be here and so on. I remember how, uh, I think before I went for my first chemotherapy, my pastor took time, like, invited me over to his office. We stayed like for an hour or two. And he just said, he was just kept telling me, choose to know nothing else except Christ crucified. It didn't make sense to me. But at that time, I needed to hold on to something. And then a friend of mine, Convenant, um, sent me God's medicine by um, Ebo, um, Reverend Ebo at Nioja. And that thing, wow, was amazing. I took it like my medications because uh, I had to take supplements and stuff because of the effect of the um, therapy. I went for the first therapy and it was, it was terrible. But in between those things, I was just hoping, like, okay, maybe if we go for another test, the pathology test, I was, they would just declare me fine, they'll find nothing. And then when the results came out, it was still the same thing. And the doctors were like, this thing is going, it's spreading fast. We might have to cut off the affected parts of the body. And I stood on God's word. I knew that was not going to be my end. And I kept proclaiming his word. I've been through a lot of challenges in life, but that one was different. And something that has always marked my life is that um, I would want to say that I am the one that God loves. I know he loves every one of us. But Seeing the things that I've been through in this life, I know that God will carry my matter for head. So I had to use pigeon, but that's how much his love for me is. So I went through the second chemo. That one, I was faced with life and death, actually, at that point. And prior to that second chemo, because after every chemo, after I rest for like one week, I go come back to Port Harcourt, and then I sit with my pastor, we get talking. It's before the second one, he told me, choose life over that. So the second chemo, even before the administration, I started feeling, I was, uh, no, no. I don't know how to put it in words. I couldn't sit, I couldn't lie down. I was in between, I could only hear voices of people. From the distance, they were with, around me, but I was hearing their voices from the distance. It's like they are going, and then I said, "I choose life for that." After that night, I vomited. I kept vomiting for the next three days. I didn't eat. I didn't drink water. I was taken to the A and E unit, and for three days, they were trying everything. They tried everything, even the drink, everything I was trying. 
but there was a testimony out of it. After the three days, my personal oncologist, the person who was taking care of me, he was like, you don't look like when, what you went through. I didn't look like it. Most people didn't even know what I was going through. And that was the message of God. After the second chemo, I took it upon myself that I wasn't going to go for another one. And then, so I told them, I told my family that I wasn't going again. So they referred me to another center. And I went to meet this man. And he said, it's spreading. It's everywhere. It's going to take over your body. I was just looking at him. And then he said, there are things that God can heal, but cancer is not one of them. I said, hey, now you have given me a reason to believe. He said, yeah, he mentioned some men of faith that had lost people uh, on the account of cancer. I said, okay, I will be the first person. So I left his office knowing that I wasn't going to come back. And I told God, so I am like this. I am not going back. And this is the end of it for my family. I am ending it for my generation. My children are not going to even know what it feels like to have cancer. They won't even have lungs, let alone cancer. And that was how I told my entire family, you should not be afraid. I'm not going to die. Nothing is going to happen to me. I need to stop this for this family. And I held on to that. So, so I went for a blood test. And there was no chance of cancer in my body. And that was 22 years. For the past three years, I have been pale and hurt. I've been stronger than I have ever been. And sometimes I have an aunt who also has it who had to cut off her breast. She'll be like, I'm amazed. Are you are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. She's surprised, like how? It's the it's the message of God. So this is my story. My story is that through the fire, it's there. That scripture is not a lie. Scripture is not a story. It's true. I have seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the Lord. I have seen death and I've seen death swallowed up in victory. And I dare to say that I won't call myself a survivor. I did not survive anything. Because Christ paid for it before I was born. I want to say that God defeated cancer in me. And I also want to encourage anybody that is going through a hard time. There is nothing. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead is able to cure any disease, even if it doesn't have a name. There's nothing terminal in the life of Christ. Life swallows everything. Swallows everything. The life of Christ swallows death. Death has no hold on us. I am God's beloved. I am the one he has taken special interest in. So this is my love story. I want to take all this time to pray for as many people who are sick, specifically who are suffering from the bondage of cancer because it's a spirit of infirmity. Um, the scripture says that he bore our sickness and by his stripes we are healed. Yeah, uh, where he is actually said in past things. He also said that we were redeemed from the cause of the law. Sickness is a cause from the law, and we have been redeemed. He also said that we've been called out of our father's house, of our people, our nation, our tribe. So it doesn't matter what the medical report says, whether your great great grandfather or whoever had it. Because you've been translated out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, you don't have a pact with sickness. You don't have any dealings with death. So by the reason of what Christ has done, by his perfect sacrifice, by the reason of the blood of Jesus, the lamp of God without spot or wrinkle, I speak in the name of Jesus to everyone under the bondage of the enemy. I speak healing to your body right now in the name of Jesus. I cast out every spirit of infirmity out of your body in the name of Jesus. 
you have been redeemed from the cause of the Lord. You are free. For whosoever the Son of God sets free is free indeed. So I set you free in the name of Jesus. You are healed by His stripes. Your body is restored. Your bones are restored. Your lungs are restored. In the name of Jesus, the life of God flows through every cell, every tissue, every organ of your body. In the name of Jesus, blood was shed for you. Your sins are forgiven. Therefore, no infirmity has a hold on your body. In the name of Jesus, you are healed and you are made whole. In the name of Jesus, amen. Do you remember how it felt when you found yourself in a deep mess? When all hope was lost and all doors seemed shut? When friends were few and tears replaced laughter? When the money was out and luck lingered? When sickness ravaged your body and you envied those who could sleep? When your words were few and all you could do was stare? When fear ravaged your heart and oppression ate deep into your soul. Did you ever make it through? Did God turn it around for good? Let someone experience love, hope, joy, impetus for action, help through your story. Be loud about your victory and be someone's light today. I've never seen this kind of love before. Ha. I've never seen this kind of God before Who I be, where you love me So say you came to die for me on the cross yeah. oh. I searched and searched and searched No God like this I tried and tried and tried No love like this, oh